Good morning to all of you. We are grateful, thankful to God again for the blessing of life and uh, to be able to uh, wake up this morning, to be able to worship God in the spirit of holiness, the spirit of uh, beauty, uh, God allowing us again the privilege of gathering together as we have, uh, whether it's here in the, uh, the, one of the campus, the sanctuary, or whether you're at your home, whether you're at the, in the, uh, the den of your area, your living room, wherever you may be. Uh, we are grateful and thankful to God. We have today kind of a modified situation that's going on. God has uh, uh, allowed some things to happen. You all remember Reverend Wilson had his own vocabulary, and he used to say it this way, that we plan and God sometimes displants, yeah. and uh, yeah. made a lot of sense because the reality, uh, as we do know today, as we celebrate Jesus Christ, we also are looking forward to the ordination service of Reverend Sean P. Aguilar. That's going to be this afternoon yeah. at 3 o'clock. And uh, as God would have it, uh, uh, yesterday morning, uh, he had a call uh, from one of his pastor friends that had a desire uh, for him to come and preach today. And that service starts at 10 o'clock. And so we are going to have Sean up early, uh, normally than what we normally do. So get ready again for the preach word. So we're going to go right into our services for today uh, to get started. Things are going to be modified from what we normally do. Everything we normally do, we're still going to do it, but it's just going to come at a different time. So I want to just open up. Uh, in, the, uh, in the word of God, in Psalm 125, the word says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, All right. which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of the wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hand to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, All right. the Lord shall lead them away. With the workers of iniquity, peace be upon Israel. The key thing is that the Lord reminds us is that he will surround his people from this time forth and forevermore. We can take solace in that, we can take joy in that, because the reality that God reminds us is that though we are dealing with the prevalence of coronavirus, COVID-19, all over the world, God still reminds us that he is the one ultimately surrounding us. Yeah, yeah. God is still yeah. uh, demonstrating to us that he is our protector, our provider. Yeah. Again, he is the one that is controlling all things. And so we celebrate that on today. So I would that you would join in as we continue to praise God. Brother Tyrone is going to lead us in prayer. The brothers are going to lead us in song. And the next voice you will hear will, will be that of our preacher for the day in the person of Sean P. Aguilar, who's going to give to us the word of God. Let us pray. Father God, we come once again this morning, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for thank you. Thank allowing you. us here once again, Father God. You are so good and merciful, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for for everything that you have done and what you are about to do, Father God. Mm -hmm. We know that we are in a pandemic, Lord, but Lord, Lord we know that Lord you are in control of that pandemic. So, Lord, we not put nothing ahead of you, Father God, and we just thank you, Lord, for being our Father, and we thank are your you. children, thank Lord. You. So we, Lord, we just want to lift you up this morning, Lord. We come with songs and praises and, and your word, Lord, and Father God, yeah. we pray, Lord, that those who are listening, Lord, that you would open their minds and their heart, Lord, that they receive your word, Lord, that, that, that they would be helped, Father God, because you are a helper, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Father God, it's not man, it's you, Father God. But we pray for those who are in control. We pray for who you put Please in control, God. Lord, because Please we know God. you can shut them down of a blink of an eye, oh. Father God, and all power is in your hand. And we just thank you right now, thank Lord, you, Lord, for allowing us to be in our right mind to recognize that you are the head, Lord, of our life, Lord. And there is no other. So, Lord, we're not here for no shape, form, or fashion, Father God. And we don't have a full house, Lord, but we pray it in you, Lord. Oh, oh have mercy God. right now. Oh and those God. who are listening, Lord, we pray that they praise you, Lord, that they will lift you up, Lord. Oh, because you're so good, Lord. Yeah. And we can't make it without you, Father God, because you said in your word you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Father God, you said we just trust in you with all our heart, yeah. Father God, and lean not to our own understanding. Yes, all our ways oh, acknowledge God. you, Father God, that you would direct our path. So, Father Father, we're acknowledging you right now, Lord. We ask for direction and guidance, Lord. Please, oh, Lord. have mercy Please, right Lord. now, Lord. So thank you, Father God, for being so good thank and grateful, Lord. Lord. So, Lord, we know, Lord, that, that your, your, your son Jesus is sitting next to you, Lord, oh, interceding yes, for us, Lord. And we thank you for that, thank Lord. You, Lord. He knows what we're going through now. He knows because he has 
became the form of a man, yeah. Lord, and walked this. And you know the pain and the suffering that we go through, Father God. So, Lord, we ask you, Lord, if he sent next to you, Lord, he'll see that you would just have mercy and have continue mercy, to God. bless and keep us, Lord. Yes, God. And bless those who is out of work, Lord, out of job, Lord. Lord, those who are short of food, Father yes, God. Yes, God. We know, Lord, that you are even. They got so many sources yes, yes. And, and, and resources to help the people, those who need help, Father God. Oh, have mercy, Lord. Have so mercy. we ask you, Lord, to continue to let them. Search for those who are being helped, who need the help, Father God. Please, God. Thank you, Lord, for being so Lord. wonderful. We ask Thank all you. this, Father Lord. God, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Misunderstood, 
on you. He was the savior of sinners. Oh, they hung him on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. He was God's only son. I'm very glad to tell you. He told him, not my will. But done be done. He got to understand, yeah. I'm very, very, very glad to tell you. Yeah, he'll understand. He'll understand. He'll understand. He'll understand. I know he will. Talking about Jesus. He knows what's going on. He knows he all your he problems. He's a heavenly father. He knows all about you. He all you have to do is keep your he hand. He keeps his hand. He understands. He understands. He understands. He understands. He understands. He understands. He understand. He understand. I know. He understand. He understand. Yes, he understand. I know he understand. He understand. Call on him. You can call on him. In a midnight hour. He understand. Call on Jesus. He understand. Call on Jesus. He understand. Call on Jesus. He understand. All you need. He understand. He understand. He'll 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 understand. He
If you would just allow me to tag this text and think from this thought, when a plan comes together. When a plan comes together. You know, being a child of the 80s, I enjoy 80s novelty and nostalgia. One of the favorite shows that even though I didn't watch it in, 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 at the time that it was on, but I gained an appreciation for it as I got older, as I look back again at the novelty and the nostalgia of the 80s, was a television program by the name of The A-Team. You see, the A-Team was comprised of four members, and their job as an alpha team was to be a military unit. But something happened where they ended up having to go out on their own. And what they would do is complete missions for private parties. What would happen is somewhere around the globe, someone would have a problem that they could not solve. And when someone had done everything that they could do, someone would inevitably recommend that it's time for you to call the A-Team. The 1980s television show would eventually be adapted into a motion picture in 2010 by the same name. In this 2010 movie, the leader of the A-Team, Colonel Hannibal Smith, would give a quote early on in the movie and say this, I believe that no matter how random things may appear, there is still a plan. See, Hannibal Smith was used to planning things out and having his team execute with expertise. But every now and then, the enemy would attempt to distract, divert, and divide the efforts of the A-team. But inevitably, somehow, the A-team would prevail at every episode. And at, the, and at the end, Colonel Hannibal Smith, with a cigar in his mouth, would say, I love it when a plan comes together. Walk with me through the text. If we look at chapter 4, we find ourselves in a minute and a moment where Jesus is in transition. Jesus is uh, on his way uh, from Judea, uh, and he needs to get to Galilee. And there's three ways that he can take. He can go left, he can go right, or he can go straight up the middle. Straight up the middle takes him through Samaria, which is the most direct route. However, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. Those were the folks on the other side of the tracks. Those were the folks that wore a different color collar. And, and they, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. But, but Jesus, if we look at the beginning of chapter 4, he's, it is said of him that he needed to go through Samaria. There was a divine appointment that was on the Almighty's agenda that must be kept. And he is going to journey through Samaria and he finds himself at a well. He finds himself at a well and as he's there, the first of two conversations begin around this well. The first conversation at the well is with a woman. And so this woman who remains unnamed, they have a conversation and it centers around 
the type of water that the woman came to get. And then moving from the conversation of the water, Jesus moves from the natural and the water in the well to the spiritual living water. And then their conversation continues. It, it goes around marriage monuments and then the Messiah. So this conversation, Jesus takes it from the natural to the spiritual. And eventually he tells the woman to go get your husband. And the woman uh, initially answers that she has no husband. And Jesus commends her for her honesty and says, you know, you're right. You're right. But the one that you have right now is not your husband. So now we're getting personal. And then beyond that, she attempts to change the subject from marriage to monuments. And she starts talking about the temple at Mount Gerizim versus the temple at Mount Zion. And she begins to perceive that Jesus is at least some type of prophet. And then she begins to ask a question or make a statement rather that I get what you're saying about these different theological constructs. But when the Messiah comes, he'll clear all these things up. So let's not, let's not argue about the details. And Jesus encourages her to understand that, that the Messiah that you're talking about, you're, you're talking to him. It's right here in front of you what you're, what you're seeking. And she begins to believe that Jesus is the, the greater prophet that was promised in Deuteronomy chapter 18 because the Samaritans only believed in the first five books of the Bible. So she had enough knowledge to know that a Messiah was coming and Jesus had proven to her in their conversation that he was such a Messiah. She's so moved by the conversation that she leaves her water pot and she goes into the city. That's the first conversation. A lot of times we are looking at the woman at the well and we only think about the conversation that happens between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. However, once she moves off the scene, we have the second conversation at the well. And the conversation at the well with the woman is uh, succeeded by the conversation at the well about witness. You see, Jesus decides to put on a missions, evangelism, and discipleship conference for his disciples as he gets them to understand what is about to happen. Because there's no wasted motion with Jesus. He takes the opportunity not only to make himself known to the Samaritan woman, but he also takes it as a training opportunity for his disciples. Look at the text. We're in verse 27 on our way to verse 39. And as a woman left her water pot, then the disciples come up and they start bringing up to Jesus uh, the idea of what's on the menu. We, we, we need you to eat, uh, Jesus. And, and, and has anyone brought him anything to eat? They're concerned about his physical status. But, but Jesus responds and says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and watch this and to finish his work. Jesus is always on mission. Jesus is always on task and he's trying to focus his disciples on what they came to do. They may not be aware, but they're about to get some on the job training. So then now he gives them the concept of one sowing and another reaping because this woman who just got saved is about to go evangelize a whole city. But because she's new in the faith, she's not going to be able to take this entire city all the way. 
So he's trying to prepare his disciples, says, look, someone else is going to go sow, but you are going to reap. And at that time of year, the fields had not fully grown. So they were looking around, and I can see Jesus telling his disciples and pointing to the field that, that you think that the harvest is not yet full. But watch this, as they're looking at the fields that are not yet ready to harvest, here come the men from the city that this Samaritan woman has gone and said, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. And so now these Samaritans who would have worn a white head garment, you see these heads bobbing up and down, walking from the city out to the well to come see Jesus, looking like the fully formed heads of wheat that would be ripe for harvest. And Jesus turns and points to the men of Sychar that are coming out from the city, and they said, look, that is the natural harvest. You're looking at natural things. This is the spiritual harvest that's coming out from the city, and I need you to be ready because other people have labored, and you're going to enter into their labors. You're going to pick up where someone else left off. And so that brings us to verse 39. So we saw that there was a conversation at the well with the woman, and then there's a conversation at the well about witness, and now we'll see the conversion of the world through the word. The conversion of the world through the word. It's really easy as one, two, three. Look at verse 39. We see, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him, because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. It all starts with one testimony. It all begins with one testimony. And I would encourage you as a point of personal application that when you are soul winning, whenever you're conversing with other people, start afresh with your story. Go with what you know. You see, this, this Samaritan woman who's unnamed, in the context of a Jew, she was the wrong race. She was the wrong gender. She lived in the wrong part of the country. Everything was all wrong. That's why the disciples, if you look back earlier in the chapter, they're wondering, why is he even talking to her? But with Jesus, there are no boundaries. With Jesus, there's no uh, plot of geography that he will not search. There's no boundary that he will not surpass. There's no barriers in terms of color of skin or how much money you make or any of these things. Where you live, where, you're, where you were brought up. None of these things stop Jesus. But you have to start afresh with your story. See, her story was uncorrupted with isms and denominations and ologies. It was very simple. Come see a man. The man named Jesus. Sometimes we overcomplicate the gospel. It is very simple. What do you believe concerning the God-man Jesus? No matter if you're an atheist or a Zoroastrian or anything in between, everything comes down to this one question. What do you believe about Jesus? And you see, Jesus, when he dealt with the woman, he didn't beat her over the head with all kinds of bullying or, or correcting her at every term or, or telling her that what kind of theology she followed and that she didn't have things right. He continually pressed towards the mark of her understanding who he is. So number one, start afresh with your story. Look at verse 40. So when the Samaritans had come to him, so these are the men of the city. 
And if you're wondering why the men of the city were the ones that she went to first, some people think that it's because of her uh, so-called bad reputation. But I would encourage you to remember that she was married five times. And in these times, women didn't have a lot of power or options. So those marriages ended either in death or divorce. She found herself in an adulterous relationship, but those first five marriages were all legitimate. So it wasn't like sometimes she gets painted with a bad reputation, that she was running around town and that she went to the men because those were all her former conquests. But that is just not the case. The reason that she went to the men is because the men would sit at the gate of a city and judge. And she literally told the first people she came in contact with about Jesus. You know, when I was looking for uh, a home years ago, I had a realtor. And this realtor gave me her business card. And on the front, it had all her personal contact information. But on the back, when you flipped it over, it just had a little phrase in quotes. And the phrase in quotes said, the best compliment you can ever give me is a referral of your family or friends. If you want to show me appreciation, Sean, since I helped you with this house, refer me someone that is either your family or your friend or your coworker. Good Shepherd, how many referrals have you sent to Jesus since you have been saved? How many people have you told, come see a man that told me all that I ever did? So it starts with your testimony. Start afresh with your story. But then look in verse 40 and 41 we see not just one testimony, but we see two days. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. So not only do we have to have, number one, our testimony, and we start afresh with our story, but also we have to stay along with his story. We have to stay along with his story because it only took a moment or a minute for this Samaritan woman to share her story about how she was saved. But it took much longer for other people to be able to accept and understand what she already knew. Y'all, we've got to have patience with folks. And we've got to have patience with ourselves. When you look at the ratio of a minute versus two days, and remember, this is Jesus, so it might take us two weeks, two months, two years. There's people in, in my life that I've been working on for 10 years. We have to start afresh with our story, but we're not sufficient to hold them. So then we got to have someone plugged in and stay along with his story and get them to spend some time with Jesus because we can't make ourselves to be a little idol that people always look to and run to every time they need a Bible verse. People have to learn how to pray for themselves, read the Bible for themselves, and we have to steer those we come in contact with not to come to us as the source, but as a resource. It's one testimony. Start afresh with your story. Stay along with his story. And then there's three facets, looking in verse 42, three facets that we all need to understand about Jesus Christ. 
Three facets. Look at verse 42. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him. And we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So start afresh with your story. Stay along with his story, but then stow away in the story. Stow away in the overarching story of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, we're all on a journey from a garden to a city with a cross in between. And the only difference between then and now is whether you're looking towards the cross or you're looking back on the cross. We, in our time now, we're looking back on the cross. And we need to stow ourselves away and stow others away in the overarching story of the Bible. When something's stowed away, it's put in a secure hold. This is, this is a term that's usually used of, of nautical vessels. You stow something away in the hold for safe keeping. And if you look, Jesus is referred to in three different facets here in verse 42, and each one of them deserves our attention. It says in verse 42, for we ourselves have heard him. So the first facet is that we must understand and appreciate the force of his personality. The force of Jesus as the God man, who he is. So he's referred to in the personal sense, we have heard him, but then he's given and recognized by a title. We know that this is indeed the Christ. So not only in the first facet, we have to appreciate the force of his personality, but also we need to understand the fulfillment of his prophecy. The Christ was the Greek term for the anointed one, which was the equivalent of the Messiah. It must be understood as a facet of Jesus how he fulfills all of the messianic prophecies that are listed in the Old Testament. Because in order for Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to be effective, he must be the Messiah. And when he has fulfilled, which he has, all of the criteria, born of the, of the right tribe, born at the right time, born of a virgin, died, buried, resurrected, all these things prophesied thousands of years in advance. We must be able and, and, and must communicate the fulfillment of his prophecy. But not only the force of his personality and not only the fulfillment of his prophecy, but also the faithfulness of his profession. At the end of verse 42, it says, not only that we know that this is indeed the Christ, but he's also called the Savior of the world. He's called the Savior of the world. And you see, that, that word world in the Greek is the word cosmos. You may be familiar with it in the term cosmopolitan or, or, or cosmetology. You, you, you have the idea of the entire world system. And you see, it was important for the disciples to hear that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world, because they just came from Jerusalem. And then they went from, from Jerusalem in chapter 2 to Judea, there in chapter 3. And then in chapter 4, now we're in Samaria. And does that sound familiar? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. If, if you're thinking of Acts 1 and 8, you're thinking of the right thing. And so the Savior of the world, that is Jesus' profession. If he were to hand you a business card, it would say, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. Because that is what he does. And it was not that salvation is of the Jews and contained only to the Jews, but that it is of the Jews, but is for the world. Is for the world. And so we as the church are told that 
that the church moved from Jerusalem to Judea to Jamaria, Samaria and to the remotest parts of the world. So this follows the pattern of Jesus Christ, and he set it out himself, and it's up to us to pick up that same pattern and program. Yes, and you see, just like Colonel Hannibal Smith I see, I see. that would plan out a program for the team to execute a mission yes, in the very same way the Godhead sat back in eternity past and they looked down the corridors of eternity and decided to enter Jesus into time itself. And they looked down through 42 generations to send Jesus as a fulfillment of Genesis 3.15 of the Proto-Evangelion that he would fulfill all of these prescriptions of the Messiah. And as he came down through those 42 generations, he lived a sinless life. He reached out to the Jew first and also the Greek. But when the time was appointed, he allowed himself to be captured. He was not killed because he said, I lay down my life and I can take it up again. And when he allowed himself to be captured, he gave himself as a ransom for many. He gave himself on a cross. And when they hung him high and they stretched him wide, after from the sixth to the ninth hour, he hung his head in the sockets of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost. And he died. He died, and I know he died. Surely he died, but early. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And when he got up, he gave the receipt not just for his own resurrection, but he gave the pattern and the promise that he would be the firstborn and the first fruit, and that was the promise of our resurrection. He ascended into heaven and he's coming back like he said that he would. And when he comes back, he'll take his church in the twinkling of an eye and we will be with him in heaven until he returns back on the earth. will reign for a thousand years. The sun and the moon will have no use for. We'll walk on streets paved with gold. There'll be no tears. There'll be no crying. There'll be no coronavirus. There'll be no economic downturn. There'll be no issues because the Lord and the Lamb will be our light. I love it when a plan comes together. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise once again. We are so thankful and grateful to God again just for the word that we have heard, and I think he explained it well. We ought to love it when a plan comes together. And the cool thing about the Lord's plan that, uh, that Reverend Agnes Lord just shared with us is the reality that God included us in that plan. I'm, I'm so serious, though. I want to think, think about that. God included, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just say it for me, messed up me in that plan. And, 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 here, and here is the truth. The moment that Adam rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden, it was necessary that Jesus had to die. So had God made the decision that right then, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take this any further. I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna have them have any children or anything. I'm stopping this thing right now with Adam and Eve. Jesus will still had have to die. 
he would have had to die because that was the plan that God had put in place. But he allowed it to go on and on and on. And here we are today, y'all. Here we are today included in that plan. Father, how we love you, how we thank you, how we bless you, how we praise you. Thank you, God, for your word that reminds us again a plan that came together. And that plan, again, ultimately was to demonstrate your glory. To demonstrate that you know how to glorify yourself. And so, God, I pray that you will glorify yourself in this place today in the hearts and minds of your people. Those who are hearing your word right now, speak to their hearts, Lord. Help them to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as already been explained by Reverend Agar Lord. As he's already shared with us the reality of Jesus Christ. That he did come to live. He did come to die. He did come to be buried in a grave. He did come to be risen from the dead. He's gone back on your right hand sitting right now. But you declare that one day he's coming back. And for that God we rejoice. For that Father we love you. For that we give you honor. For that we give you glory. And for that we give you praise. We ask now that you would speak to hearts as only you can. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today, I don't know where you are. I don't know what situation that you're in. But you can be part of that plan that God had to come together. And we would say today to invite you to come to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We recognize again that he did have to die. He did have to be buried. But all of that was for our sins. The Bible clearly says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. And so today, don't know your age or stage of life. Don't know what you've been through. Don't know what you're going through right now. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter how bad or good you think you are. It doesn't really matter. All you have to do is recognize your need for a savior, namely Jesus Christ. And you would ask the question, why do I need him? Because God said this, there was only one person who was absolutely pure, one person absolutely perfect, one person that existed that did everything that the Father wanted him to do, and it was Jesus, his only begotten son. So as a result of what Adam did in the garden, as a result of Adam's disobedience to God, God put the plan together. He's already had the plan together that whoever would believe in his son, Jesus Christ, could have eternal life. Because Adam brought sin, Jesus Christ brought salvation. So today, if you haven't trusted him, if you don't know him as your Savior, if you don't know him to be the Lord of your life, I wouldn't delay. I wouldn't discuss it very long. Uh, I wouldn't think about it too much. But today, today is the day. And you ought to make a choice for Jesus Christ. None of us have the promise of tomorrow. Matter of fact, none of us have the promise of the next five minutes. But we do have right now, and we know what we can do with right now, and that is to put your faith, your trust, your confidence in Jesus Christ as your personal sin bearer. Believe he died. Believe he was buried. Believe that God raised him from the dead, and the Bible says you can be saved. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And if you do that today, that becomes the start of your life. That becomes the start of the fact that God had you included in this plan that has now even come together to a greater extent because you recognize today that he's included you in that plan. Father, how we love you, how we bless you, how we praise you and thank you for this opportunity to present Christ to those who may not know him. We pray, God, that that would be a response to that call. And it may not be that we know it today, but as Sean said, it may be five years, ten years, fifteen years from now. But we pray, God, that you would open hearts and that you would spare life. It's in Christ's name we pray these things. Amen. Perhaps you're sitting with someone that they can share a little bit more of what we talked about with you. Perhaps, again, you need to call us. The number to call is 713-672-9847. And we will be delighted and excited. Uh, to, uh, to speak with you, to give you further information concerning this Messiah and Savior. Namely, we know him as Jesus, the Christ of God. We thank you again for listening in, and we pray that you would respond as God will move you to do so. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. Well, it's offering time.
is offering time. Again, there are some who are on the campus, some in the sanctuary. Uh, if you do have uh, your offerings to offer, there are deacons who will serve you. Just raise your hand. They'll be willing to assist you. Uh, if not, those of you that are online, you know what you need to do uh, as a result of online giving, that opportunity that has been given to us. We pray again that you will take advantage of that, please, ma'am, and please, sir, that you would do so in accordance with how the Lord has blessed you. The Bible reminds us that we sow sparingly, we're going to reap sparingly, but if we sow bountifully, we're going to reap bountifully. So he says to us, let each of us give as we purpose in our hearts, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a hilarious giver. That is a cheerful giver. That is an excited giver. And so we pray and trust that you would respond. Father, thank you now for the giver and for the gift. We pray, God, that the resources that have been given to us <clears throat> will be used again for the expansion of your kingdom, for the expansion of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and again for the growth of those who are part of the body of Christ. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I would that you would help me. We want to uh, recognize our uh, birthdays and the like. Brothers, if y'all would just get to the side and get ready again. Y'all going to be coming back up shortly. So if y'all give me a hand clap. Uh, Faith Williams, Timothy Johnson, Miles Ellisor, Farina Edward, Deidre Castle, Corinthian Jones, and Tyler Harris. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday again to each and every one of you. And also celebrating uh, 36 years, and that's going to be on the 24th of this month. That is Lee and Glenda Williams, 36 years of marriage. And we pray again that you uh, continue to enjoy your day uh, and all that God has allowed you to do. Our brothers are going to come back and they're going to finish up with a song before we uh, make our transition today. Uh, we want to thank God that we have some guests that are with us, and we certainly want to acknowledge their presence. Thank you all so much for worshiping with us on today. Uh, some friends of uh, Sean who were invited, and they're here with us on today. And we're so grateful that God has allowed that privilege and allowed opportunity for them to, uh, to be a part of our service on today. We're not going to have any, any of our regular meetings on this week. Uh, I do recognize that this is a kind of a, a, a break for our teachers, our children, <clears throat> and I think I mentioned possibly having the uh, Bible study on Wednesday, but no, we're, gonna, we're just going to take the whole break on this week, and I pray that you will enjoy uh, your time together with your families. I will say this again, Good Shepherd, <clears throat> we have been hearing literally for the last two weeks the uprise in the uh, positivity testings of the coronavirus. The CDC, others are... Uh, saying it to us, our own mayor, uh, our own uh, judge, uh, Hidalgo, is saying it to us. I want to uh, reiterate and affirm and even say thank God for their message, if you will, that I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, um, to, to let's change our tradition in terms of how we would normally do Thanksgiving. They are saying let's do Thanksgiving with folk that, are, that live in the house with us. And I just believe that that's some good advice. I believe it's good advice. We're not saying that we're not going to ever do anything again. All we're saying is just a delay on what we have been doing, just a little bit of a different way than what we've been doing. So I want to encourage you all, please, ma'am, please, sir, stay home for Thanksgiving. Stay safe. And once this is done, once this is passed, uh, we can all come back together, have all the Thanksgivings we want, all the Christmases we want. Uh, because we know we can celebrate that at any time. So I just want to encourage us, please. Um, I, I am speaking to some of you as a pastor. Others, I'm speaking as a father. But I'm speaking out of concern uh, for your safety. Uh, we do we have them within our own church family. There are some that, are, that have uh, tested positive. And so we're concerned about that. And uh, we would hope that we can do our part as citizens of the United States to make sure that we are not causing it to spread even further. So if y'all help us to do that, we would sure appreciate it, please, ma'am, and please, sir. We're going to start our Sunday school at five minutes after after uh, 10, and, uh, and we're going to go until about 10.55, or 10.50, if you will, 10.55, right in that area. So we're going to be done before 11 o'clock today. Don't forget, Sean's uh, uh, ordination is this afternoon at 3 o'clock. 
and uh, our male chorus is going to be, our musicians are going to be here. Uh, we'll be here about an hour, hour and 15 minutes just in recognition of that ordination service. So I would that you would tune in, if you will. Uh, cut off the football game for about an hour, if you will. About an hour. Record it if you can. And then join in to the, the virtual service of us sharing with Brother Sean. I'm going to give the benediction. The brothers are going to gonna lead us in song uh, till about 10 o'clock. We'll fade out. They're going to probably still be singing. Uh, but just join in in praise of our God. Amen. Father, how we love you again and thank you so much just for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for the songs that have been sung. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. And even now while we pray, Lord, we remember our own sister, Doris Addison. You know her situation. You know her circumstance. You know what she is going through in, as it relates to COVID-19, Lord. We know you're the healer. We know you're a provider. So we ask, Lord, according to your divine will, that you would raise Sister Addison up as only you are able to do. God, that you would touch her body, touch her mind, touch her spirit, touch her soul, Lord. Help her to know that she is loved, she is cared about more than anything else, more than by anyone else, more because of you, Father. And so we thank you again for her church family. We thank you, God, for Daphne. We thank you for Doug. Thank you for her sister. Thank you for her children that are concerned about her, her grandchildren. God, for other members of our church who have had that same experience of going through that same thing, we just ask for healing in their bodies, in their spirits, in their minds, in their souls. God, we do pray again for Sister Chandler as she continues to grow old in grace. Help her to grow old graciously. Uh, God, for those who care about her, help them to care about her. For Sister Almira, her caregiver, we ask your continued blessings upon them. For Sister Phil, Lord, we thank you for still maintaining her appetite and allowing her to continue to grow older, almost 93 years old. Mm. And we pray, God, that even as the dementia uh, is affecting her life, we thank you that it is still well with her soul. For Brother Callahan, for Brother Leonard, uh, for Brother Otto Smith, for all of our members that are going through seasons of difficulty, sickness, disease, we ask your mercy be upon us. Be with us now as we transition to our Sunday school time and you would lead God, guide us, bless us, and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, brothers. This